Hello, my name is Leopoldo Armesto, and in this video I will explain how to compute the uh, workspace of a 6 degrees of freedom robot arm, such as the case of the IRB140 ABB robot. The idea is that uh, we will use Copilisim in order to generate such workspace, but then later we will move into MATLAB to compute the boundary for the workspace and save this boundary into file and then add it uh, or read that boundary file in Copilisim and check if a candidate position uh, that we would like to re reach with the, with the wrist of the robot, uh, it's inside of the workspace so we can move or freely save, uh, uh, sorry, uh, freely move in uh, inside this workspace, okay? So let's explain what, what we have here. Uh, we have the ABB IRB140 robot, as I said, but I have just simply simplified the robot so I just keep only the, the essential elements that I would like to use for this simulation. Uh, these are a set of shapes that, as you can see here, are hidden by the, in the default layers that are simplified um, shapes. If, if you want to see what they are, it's just simply a simplified mesh of the actual robot, okay, these shapes here. And then we have the busy low ones, which are the ones you're seeing here. All of them are static shapes, which means that they do not have any kind of dynamics and they are not respondable, okay? So they are just simply purely kinematic simulations. And uh, in particular, the ones which are uh, hidden, I have enabled the collidable uh, property here, as you can see, but the ones with the visible ones are not enabled, okay? You can see that that one is collidable, but that one is not collidable and so on, okay? That's important because the idea is that I would like to generate the workspace of the robot in such, such as that uh, I would like to detect the collision of the robot with the ground floor or even any kind of object that I have here or even I can add a tool here and, and include this tool as part of my computations, okay? So this is a very specific uh, case, but it once you have it, it will help you to know if, for instance, uh, candidate uh, point is inside your workspace or let's say if you want to generate a path that uh, can be reached by the robot then you it's it's worth it to, to have visually uh, this workspace and some computations that I will show okay so uh, now I have explained what we have here uh, let's move to explain what I have configured in uh, in this simulation in particular I have a collection a collection is a set of objects that uh, belong to uh, a single uh, list that allow us to um, select or, or compute uh, collisions uh, as a one. So they are treated as a one single object. And the idea is that you have to, uh, well, uh, you have to add the, or create this collection. The name of the collection is just simply collection. That's the default name. And in theory, you have to select this uh, tree of selected object and then this object selected and then click add and then we'll add these elements here. And if you want to make sure that everything is fine, you can visualize the selected object. And, uh, and here you can see that all objects inside are part of a collection and that's what we want. Okay. Then later also we have the wrist dummy. This dummy here, it's just here in the middle is, is actually in the wrist of the robot. It's just here in the intersection of this joint here and this joint here. It's There's the wrist, uh, it's positioned there. And the idea is that we would like to compute the workspace for all possible configurations of the wrist that are free of collision, as I said, okay? So in order to do that, what we have to do is we have to go to calculation module properties here, and we have to create two uh, collision objects. First one, it's using the collection I have selected or I have shown before and is checking the collision against all other entities in the simulation. And that's what I name as robot collision. That's just simply a name. And then the second uh, collision object I have configured is this one here, which is the IRB100 uh, underscore link seven, that one here, that will also check the collision against all other entities, particularly if they are, if it's colliding with the robot itself. Okay, so the uh, 
now we have the collections here that remember these names robot collision and then effector collisions because these are the names that we are going to use in, in our simulations and uh, now let's let's uh, let's see the, the script we have here uh, for this uh, example uh, the first part of the script as you can see here what I'm doing is just creating a file to write a set of data and the name of the file by default is irb140 underscore workspace dot xyz and this file will be stored uh, and uh, once the simulation is uh, stopped will be stored stored in the copelisim uh, binary folder okay so you can uh, look there and, uh, and see the contents for the, uh, for that file okay then this uh, the script basically gets some handles as you can see here the joint handles and uh, also it's uh, querying which are the interval of the limits of, for each of the joints and also gets the risks handle and also gets the handles for the collision objects that I showed you before and they are named here as call check zero to call check one. Then what I do is I generate a sweep of possible configurations with the robot and that's the important part in which you can configure how precise or not you want to be in your computations but the idea is that I have created a, a function which is called join sweep is just here okay and this function basically what it's doing is it's starting on a specific configure a, a joint number in this case is the second one to the third one this is the, the final one I want to do the sweep and this is the initial value of the table and this is the return value with uh, filled with uh, configurations for uh, for that table and uh, what I'm doing is I'm setting all possible configurations here depending on the amount of steps I want for each of the joints in particular uh, I would like to do the sweep only with the second and the third joint this is these are this joint here and this joint here because uh, the first one it's just simply the, the joint that it allows me to point to a specific direction so but I'm interested in, in computing the workspace on this uh, plane for the for a specific Q1 angle and um, so I would I would like to do the sweep with these two joints and then for each of these configurations I have here so these curves configurations that I have here I also would like to set to test all possible orientations of the end effector so that's why I do also a joint sweep using uh, joints fourth and sixth using this accuracy here uh, just simply to mention that the amount of steps the actual amount of steps is always adding up one more okay so for instance in the case of the fifth joint we're actually testing three possible um, orientations which means that the end effector is pointing let's say straight downwards to the left or to the right and then we have nine possible orientations for the, the fourth joint which will just modify the orientation of of the end effector okay so in the end we will have a set of configurations here in QRIST and QEnd and then we do here in the actuation code what we do is just basically to set the positions of the joints to such configurations in a way that I for each of the possible configurations for the wrist I check all possible uh, orientations of the end effector and then I check if there's a collision in that specific position if if there's a collision these values will here they will return one so any any in any case if we detect a collision we just simply uh, reset the counter for the possible orientations and move to the next uh, possible wrist position which means that okay we will discard this uh, this configuration but if everything is okay and there's no collision then we will in the end uh, add a new configuration and we just simply get the position of the risks and this is what we store in the in um, in the file with uh, with the tabs uh, as a as a separation uh, of, of for each of the positions and also I add the, the the configurations Q1, Q2 and Q3 that generated that uh, that position just in case okay at the end I stop the simulation and obviously I close the file okay so if we run this simulation here let's 
let's see what's happened. I mean, the robot is doing the sweep, as I mentioned. It's doing a lot of computations trying to see if there's a collision or not. For now, there's no collision here. But there are situations in which the robot will start colliding itself and then we restart with a new configuration and so on. Okay, So we can st speed up these things here and wait until it's done. But okay, you can imagine that at the end of the... Uh, of the simulation we will have the the file that i mentioned before okay the one that will be inside the copilia sim binary uh, folder okay so for now let's stop and now let's move to a uh, matlab in which i have prepared a script to in which we just simply need to load the file that we have generated we keep uh, the first and the third column, which are the X and Z, actually the X and Z um, coordinates. And with this code here, we generate the XZ boundary of all these possible points that I have generated with the, with the file that I have uh, here, the XYZ file. Okay. And then I just simply plot the points. And then I also do a tri uh, triangulate, the Delaunay triangulation uh, and store that in a STL file so I can import it into inside the um, copilism. Also, I'm interested in saving in a file this XZ coordinates here, that you, the boundary you, that you will see in a file so I can use them also in copilism. Okay, so let, let's run the script and you will see that uh, the results are rather quite simple. So that's, that's actually our configuration uh, or the, the, the sorry the, the workspace that I have, we have created with all possible configurations sweep that uh, that we have been created at the beginning all these points were filled here a lot of points that, that were valid for uh, free of collisions but we only have taken the, the the boundary okay and that's this thing here filled with um, triangles and everything that's what we have stored in the STL file and the boundary points that's what we have stored in the TX file. Okay, so now what we have to do is we have another file in which I have already imported, as you can see, this STL file here, which is the workspace of the robot. Okay, that's a file. But let me just exactly show you what, if you import yours, what you will get, because it's not exactly the same. Well, let me, that one is fine. Um, let me just simply show you what you have to do is you have to import the mesh and if you go for the folder and that's that's a file that that, that matlab has generate, generated okay and if you go to that and just import it you have here the mesh okay but as you can see here we have a lot of things that were not part of the workspace remember in matlab we have the boundary this part here is empty, okay. While here it's filled somehow, okay. That's because of the uh, Delaunay triangulation. If you go for it, uh, if you take a look to the triangles, we can see here that we have a lot of triangles that we don't need, so we can manually remove them, okay. That's a step, but relatively quite easy to to do from, okay. So you have to remove all of them that you consider a part of the boundary, okay. Once you have done that. Uh, let's say yes, then you will have the proper shape. Okay, in my case, let me just remove that one and enable again that one. In my case, this is what I have obtained. Okay, but that's just simply a shape that I use. In my case, I, use, I only use it for visually check if a trajectory is, is inside the workspace and on, on. Okay. But now what I would like to explain is what we can do with the actual boundary. Remember that we have saved a file with boundary points. And the idea is that we want to implement a function that checks if we are inside this polygon. And uh, if we are inside, then we are free to go to that position with the inverse kinematic module because we'll be part of our workspace. But if we are outside this uh, polygon or workspace, then means that this configuration it's, uh, it's, uh, it could generate um, collisions with the ground floor, with the robot itself, or whatever, okay? So I have implemented a script in order to do that. So the only difference here is that the first joints here, I put them in inverse kinematic mode 
that are being controlled by copelesim. Okay, these three, uh, three uh, first joints are being controlled by copelesim, and what it's doing is, as you can see here, these two dummies are linked. So I will move the reference point of the of the wrist, and then the idea of the inverse kinematic model that it will compute the correct angle so that the wrist is at the correct position as I specify. But before moving the reference point, I would like to check if that point I would like to move, it's a safe point and it's part, it's inside the, the workspace, okay? And this is what I have here in, in, the, in this uh, script here. First thing, I have a very simple user interface in which I have three sliders to control the X, Y, and Z position of the reference point I would like to move, okay? That's something we have seen in previous uh, videos and, uh, and since you have the code for this script, uh, you can uh, learn how to use it. The main difference is that here, these uh, values I have from the sliders, the, I have a candidate point and then I call the inside workspace function that will check if it's inside the, the workspace, then it will return true and then we are, I will actually set the position of the reference point to the indicated position, okay? I do this for the X, Y, and Z coordinates, okay? So before going to inside the workspace, uh, let me just simply explain you what I have here. This part of the code, so, sorry, this part of the code is reading the TX file that I have uh, generated with MATLAB. This file should be inside, again, uh, the Copelisim binary folder, so you, we can read it. Otherwise, we have to indicate the folder, okay? And it's reading uh, each of the, the lines of this, um, of this file and storing the variables in the WS, the workspace uh, table here, with the points belonging to the boundary, okay? And then, uh, basically, here, I'm just simply just getting some handles to to properly move the things and so on, okay? But nothing more, okay? So, in this function here, inside workspace, I'm just simply checking, this is very quite standard um, math, to check if a point is inside a workspace, or sorry, a polygon. And then for that, I, I do a for loop for all possible segments of that polygon, and then I check if, if, that's, uh, if that's correct or not, okay? And if it's if it's inside the, the workspace, then I return true. Okay, so we can see how this works. Okay, let's see uh, how this works. Let me just simply first. Okay, here we have the set position. I'm moving upwards, as you can see. I can move in X forward and backward. As, as and as you can see here, I'm not able to move even backwards because sorry because uh, let me, uh, uh, here it is. That's because of the inverse kinematic model. Okay, I'm not able to move backwards because of my inside workspace uh, function. It's saying that it's not true and then I'm not allowed to move to that position here. We can see also check, or we can check here, for instance, uh, let's move here. Now I can move downwards, but then I can't move upwards, as you can see. I'm not allowed okay, to move upwards. And even if I do that, sorry, here, yeah, there is, here's clearly I cannot move upwards. And I can move forward, but not farther than that, okay? So as you can see, it's working as expected. Okay, great. So thank you very much.